My name is Jim Kearns. I'm an associate professor and turf grass extension specialist uh, at NC State University. I'm in the Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology. Uh, my responsibilities involve every uh, aspect of turf disease in North Carolina, so home lawns, athletic fields, golf courses. Um, we run a number of different trials every year. Um, and another big responsibility is we also house uh, the turf grass diagnostic lab which receives anywhere from 600 to 700 samples uh, from around the country. Let's see, my experience with Maxtima and Navicon, uh, I think originally started back in maybe even 2013 uh, as numbered compounds. Um, and the, the story I always like to tell is when we first started working with us, I mean, a number of us around the country started sending emails to try to figure out what it was. And, you know, we do this because we know we can try to figure it out from the crops portfolio, but uh, it turned out that that wasn't the case with this one. Um, so the initial experience with some of the first three diseases, typically what we'll look at, dollar spot, brown patch, anthracnose, right? And then they'll kind of expand the scope, um, especially with dollar spot was pretty remarkable. Um, so that was very exciting and I think the main thing we all wanted to figure out was this another SDHI that was coming to the market, right? So that's basically where it started and then ever since then we've been trying to figure out other diseases, take all root rot, spring dead spot, um, summer patch, uh, fairy ring, right? And it seems like both of these products for almost everything we put it out for works pretty well. Yeah, I think uh, for these two to be important new tools, you know, one of the most important things uh, is having a DMI that doesn't have regulation. Um, and now that the transition zone is seem to be moving north, even for North Carolina, it's a huge tool for Bermuda grass grains. Um, you know, a lot of things really end up fitting in bent grass, um, as you know, but ultra dwarf Bermuda grass is where. You know, I am the most excited because we only have one other product uh, that's a DMI that doesn't pose a risk to regulation. So adding in Maxtima and Navicon really just broadens our fungicide program programming ability, right? Uh, so that's what I think is really excited, uh, exciting. Um, turns out it seems like Maxtima is working on uh, areas where DMIs have not worked in the past. Uh, that's exciting. Uh, and what I always try to educate superintendents on is, you know, they need to tell the story of using these products. It's remarkable to me that Maxtima works as well as it does at 0.2 to 0.8 ounces, right? Just this minuscule amount compared to, you know, a chlorothalonil at 3.2 ounces, right? And we're seeing 21 days control, and you're familiar with our site where we rarely see that. So that's an exciting thing to see a story of no regulation, very good disease control, and really not putting that much in the environment. So the confidence level with Maxtima and Navicon on both grasses is very high. Um, I have to commend BASF for putting the effort in and researching that, um, or we may not have known, uh, but we have now looked at, I'll start with Bermuda grass, looked at it in the fall, winter, spring, and summer uh, in conjunction with Primo, um, and we've seen no issue, uh, which is very good. Um, then we go on the flip side, the creeping bent grass, I'm not as worried about, you know, fall, winter, and spring applications, but last year we had it out and you may remember, I think you came out and looked at it with us, where it was 102, 103 degrees, and we had just applied the product with Primo with no issue. And, you know, it's very similar to a competitor's product at Briskway, very similar, that when you see it at that range of temperatures, I think the confidence is, is pretty good. The one interesting thing that I've been trying to educate people in, in the talks on Maxtima is, you know, the things that are going to be going on the label. Um, I cannot think of another 
single standalone DMI that has that. So typically DMIs I view very similar to the new SDHIs. You have them very strong on a couple diseases um, and then maybe not so strong on others. Whereas I think the remarkable thing I've seen with Max Tima is almost everything we've put it on, it's good. Um, you know, even there might be a slight weakness on brown patch, but we have a recent study with large patch where it worked. So to me, that's the remarkable thing is that a lot of diseases that it controls very well. Um, you know, ones that we've worked with, dollar spot, anthracnose, uh, take all root rot, fairy ring, spring dead spot. You know, those five right there, that's a pretty remarkable fungicide to give you those, right? Let alone, I'm sure there are many others, right, that we haven't tested. I've seen Bruce Clark show really good summer patch data. Right? So you're talking about some really strong, really difficult diseases, and this product is working on. Yeah, so how do they meet the mark for excellent anthracnose control? So I should preface it that, you know, where we are, we get anthracnose on creeping bent grass, right? So one of the issues with that compared to annual bluegrass is that disease really gets going in July. So many other DMIs are not an option, right? And the beauty of Maxtima coming in, which has provided very good anthracnose control, as well as Velista, as you mentioned, uh, and Signature Dacanil kind of programs. The nice thing that I look at it is, whether it's Maxtima or Navicon, you're getting summer patch, which has also been an issue on our bent grass grains down here in the south. And I think you can easily translate that up to annual bluegrass because it's going to be the very same thing. So superintendents can apply these with no issue again of, you know, burning or thinning or phytotoxicity and you're getting more than anthracnose. Um, and you know, ballista is, is that way as well. But the beauty of it is it takes away the pressure on the SDHIs, which has been a big class of chemistry where a lot of people are going for disease control. So that's where I look at it is, is there a way we can program this in to try to keep our SDI, SDHI applications, you know, maybe five to seven during a season, whereas I see some, you know, that are eight, nine, ten, which scares me. So for fairway dollar spot control, I think the nice thing about the label, uh, the way I understand it may come, is you're going to have a rate range. So you have a choice uh, to go from 0.2 to 0.8. So if, if they have that labor shortage, then I would say target a 0.4 or higher. And it seems like in trials I've noticed from myself and my colleagues is that's going to give at least 21 days of control. Um, now, I never typically suggest that because the environment changes. But if they're using, you know, the Smith-Kearns model, I think it's a very nice uh, product to help them, you know, not have to go out as much. Um, the other labor savings that we did a trial on um, was we did fairway dollar spot control at different water carrier volumes. So we ranged from 0.5 uh, gallons per thousand to one to two, and Maxtima worked at 0.4 for all gallonage. So maybe you don't want to, you can go out every 14 days, but you don't want to send the sprayer back after the third hole. You can stretch it, you know, with a gallon there and go out four, five, six holes. Another, you know, labor saving, time saving aspect. So I think that's what's neat is that the range that is predicted to come on the label is going to be nice for superintendents. So. Uh, advice for spring dead spot um, and the timing thing is critical. Um, I've seen far too many really good products get blamed because it wasn't used appropriately. So we've been advocating people monitor their soil temperatures, which in every state you can do this, um, whether it's through the state climate office or the Greenkeeper app that Dr. Kreuzer has in Nebraska, there's some way you can figure out your soil temperature or go buy a meat thermometer 
you know, and monitor it yourself. So what we've been recommending is when soil temperatures consistently fall uh, from the summer to 70 degrees. So what I mean by consistent, consistently is at least three to five consecutive days. Okay? So as an example, in North Carolina, that doesn't usually happen until mid-October. It used to happen mid-September, you know, 10, 12 years ago. So get away from the calendar, right, on Spring Dead Spot. And then where Max Tima and Navicon come in is we found that two applications that are well targeted at that time, what we have done is a little bit different and we've shortened the reapplication interval to 21 days because it seems like our fall isn't as long as it used to be. When we have done that, uh, 0.8 of Max Tima has been flawless in our trials, uh, which is fantastic. And then I think what's surprising to me is Navicon has also worked exceptionally well and that's the Max Tima isn't quite as high in it. So that allows, once again, flexibility for superintendents. Do they want to try to get the benefit of the insignia for take all root rot, um, fairy ring, you know, multiple other things that the Navicon can bring for them. Or on the flip side, maybe a course that doesn't quite have the budget, they still have a really rock solid spring dead spot material and take all root rot, which we have been suggesting applications around those time timings as well. So yeah, we take all root rot here in North Carolina. It's an interesting disease because originally it was one that Monica Elliott really worked with in Florida, uh, and it was called basically just Bermuda grass decline. And it happened through the summer months. It was a thinning, uh, sometimes patches. But what we've noticed with the ultra dwarf Bermuda grasses is literally distinct white patches. Um, they tend to develop late July into August and then through the fall. Uh, it's been a challenge to manage, uh, partly because DMIs have been the strongest chemistry. So the gold standards have been but pretty much tartan uh, and lexicon. Uh, so the problem with that is we don't, I don't think, have enough materials that we can rotate to get exceptional control. Um, so we've been targeting the fall with spring dead spot. Um, some of our work, I'm thinking we need to back up even into the summer months to get adequate control. So the nice thing with that is maybe we can target a tartan in the summer, right, when they're not as worried about the growth regulation. And then again, that's where the Max Tima Navicon comes in in the fall of the year if they're getting into an overseed. Uh, the plant's not growing as much on ultra dwarf Bermuda grass, and there's no issue to, you know, send it down a uh, hill by making a DMI application. I've done just a little bit of research on this with Max Tima and Navicon, where we overseeded an ultra dwarf Bermuda grass and, and put it out. I'd say it a kind of a extreme way. Uh, three applications of both the high rate of Navicon and Max Tima. And what we have noticed in the spring of the year when Ultra Dwarf and the Overseed are going to be sensitive, we've seen no issue. Uh, the plots look amazing. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that's another nice thing is that superintendents have a tool if they're at a play at a club that's asking them to oversee, which, as you know, is another stress that they're putting on top of their Bermuda grass. So having a DMI with a very broad spectrum of disease control with no additional stress, I think is a really nice tool that they have. Yeah, with regard to fairy ring, you're exactly right. Um, when people have it, it's a, it's a challenging disease to get rid of. So first and foremost, before even fungicides, we make sure that they're doing some sort of cultivation, whether it's solid tine, core aerification, uh, top dressing, uh, believe it or not, some fertility <laughs> to try to get them to grow out of it. Uh, we've also talked about tightening wetting agent intervals. Um, I'm a firm believer in doing a wetting agent every two weeks on putty greens because they do degrade just like a fungicide. And then when you bring in something like Max Tima and Navicon, um, if you don't have a you know terrible fairy ring issue, um, then we use it preventatively. 
right? Uh, try to target the soil temperatures that have already been worked out, 55, 60 degrees. On creeping bent grass, we've seen that two, three applications in the spring are fine. On the flip side, the ultra dwarf Bermuda grasses, that doesn't seem to cut. And so I think that's the biggest lesson is, even though Maxtima and Navicon are excellent, it may take four applications. And even then, it still may require a follow-up summer application of something else, an Insignia ProStar Maxtima again. Uh, because I don't know why, but on the ultra dwarf Bermuda grasses, they tend to redevelop in July and August, as, especially if we follow a lot of thunderstorms versus very dry periods. Uh, the other main thing for those that may have already a developed fairy ring issue, the biggest thing I could advise is patience. Uh, one of the studies that we did for BASF was a very nasty fairy ring site and Maxtima and Navicon ended up at zero, but it took four months, right? So it took four monthly applications before fairy ring was down to nothing. Now, subsequently, we have not seen a whole lot of fairy ring come back into that site, so we've had to move, thanks to Max Team and Navicon there, but uh, I think that's a big lesson. Uh, even though they're very, very good products, patience can be a virtue with fairy ring. You know, there's still some people that have that, you know, fond memory of Rubigan. I mean, from what we have seen, it's the same control. Uh, if not better, because I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that we were looking at phytotoxicity as much because Rubigan was the only thing we had. Um, it really wasn't until the ballistas and lexicons came out uh, that we were like, well, maybe we're not setting this back and still getting spring dead spot control. So what I've been telling people is you have a DMI chemistry, which I think on the flip side, what I'll talk about is there are superintendents that have made, I think, somewhat of a compelling case that when Rubigan went away, it seems coincidental that take all root rot started ramping back up. So makes sense. We went to an SDHI. It doesn't seem the, like the SDHIs are as strong on take all root rot. So I think the Max Tima is going to be comparable. Uh, it may not have the foolproof application, right, because Rubigan's half-life was quite long, even though Dr. Latin showed that doesn't make that big of a deal, but I mean, what we used to do with the old research is Rubigan, you could apply at any time. If we target the Maxtima and Navicon appropriately, it is the exact same control with no issue on regulation. So to me, that's a win <laughs> over from what we had. Yeah, as far as summer patch on POA, um, that's where Maxtima is so nice uh, that we can use it preventatively in the spring of the year. Uh, or if there's another product that they have been using that they want to stick with, uh, as you mentioned, when the temperatures are fluctuating, you can bring Maxtima back in at mid-May, you know, or a mid-June or even a mid-July on POA and not see any issue at all. Um, the other interesting thing that I remember from what Dr. Clark has presented um, is you don't even have to go to the 0.8 rate, it seems like. That 0.4 to 0.6 has been very good as well. Uh, so yes, it offers a lot of flexibility, I think, for those managing POA. Uh, so we have a lot of nice tools that we can manage very difficult disease in the summertime, especially given any superintendent I think knows that the climate is different. It's not what they were dealing with 20, 30 years ago of our fluctuations. So that's a beauty of not having that regulation. BASF, we create chemistry.